Hey, VC, it's Jonathan, your cheap and cheerful record collector. I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Um, I was watching a video recently from a channel called All the World's a Stage. And uh, if you don't know it, please check him out. He has some great stuff on there. Does very interesting videos. Um, he did a video the other day of his favorite uh, debut albums from the 1960s. And we obviously have very different tastes in music. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, he has some interesting choices. Uh, I don't think I picked one thing that he picked. Um, I grew up in the 60s. I started high school. My freshman year of high school was uh, September 1963. Uh, JFK was still president. Uh, the Beatles hadn't come to America yet. Uh, it was a very different world. By the time I graduated in, in uh, June of 67, the world had totally changed. The music scene had totally changed. So the 60s is really where I grew up. Um, early on in the 60s, like May 1964, when I was 15 years old, <clears throat> I used to live, we lived about an hour north of New York City. And uh, when I was 15, I used to take the bus into Manhattan, uh, then take the subway down to Greenwich Village. And I meet up with some friends and we'd spend the day hanging out in Greenwich Village. We go to the A Street bookshop, we go to the record store, we go to the poster store. We went they even had a, a button shop where the whole store was just buttons with every slogan you could think of in the world on them. Um, we go to Cafe Reggio and sit there and drink a sip espresso, thought we were so cool, you know. And then and then we uh, for dinner, we go to the local corner pizza place and get a slice of pizza. And then at night, we go to this clubs to hear music. And I usually went to the Gaslight, which was right uh, on Bleecker Street. Um, and... The Gaslight was uh, all ages, no alcohol served. So I don't know if you've seen the show Mrs. Maisel, but they it takes place at the Gaslight, a lot of it, and they show them serving alcohol. But in reality, there was no alcohol served there. <clears throat> there was no cover, and um, you had to have a two-drink minimum, and they had, like, you know, ice cream sodas or whatever the heck it was. And at 15, 16, we'd go there, and we'd see all these different folk musicians, folk music, which we loved. And I'll never forget being there, looking at my watch, going, the last bus leaves for home for 10, at 10 o'clock. I, I, I leave now before I can get to the station to make the bus. And how many times did I miss the bus and have to call my dad at 11 o'clock at night and he have to drive into the city to come pick me up? <laughs> he wasn't happy. Anyway, the 60s, in the early 60s, I was definitely into folk music. And one of the uh, debut albums that came out in 1962 um, Sort of not what he ended up doing, but it certainly um, gave you a view or a harbinger of what was to come. And that was, of course, Bob Dylan's 1962 solo album, his uh, uh, debut album, just called Bob Dylan. Uh, on this is mostly um, um, other people's songs. He covers a lot of people's songs. Not too many original songs of his. I think Talking New York is original song. And... Um, what else was here? It was his song to Woody. Um, he does his version of House of the Rising Sun, which he stole from Dave Van Ronk, who then the animal stole it from Bob Dylan. So 1962 debut album, Bob Dylan, his first album. At the club at the Gaslight, we used to see, I said Dave Van Ronk, Tom Paxton, Pat Sky. I even saw um, the Mississippi John Hurt there. All sorts of folk music people. But the one guy who I really loved, and he put out a debut album in 1964, and that was the late, great Phil Oaks. Uh, he's what we used to call a protest singer. This was his album, All the News is Fit to Sing. He used to, uh, said he used to go through the newspaper, find stories and write songs about what was actually happening in the news. Uh, second guitar on this is Danny Kalb, and Danny Kalb went on to be in the Blues Project later on with Al Cooper. And on this album, he has one more parade, uh, Talking Vietnam. And the Vietnam War was just starting then in 64 for us. Uh, Ballad of William Worthy, Knock on the Door, Talking Cuban Crisis, Bound for Glory, Too Many Martyrs. Just great, great stuff. Phil Oaks, all the news that's fit to sing. Also in 1964, four British lads came over to America. I remember the day they came in. I was in New York with a friend and. They were coming into um, LaGuardia Airport, and everybody was going crazy. 
And um, I was not a big fan. I didn't become a fan of the Beatles really until Rubber Soul came out. But the first album they had out in 64 was on VJ, and it was the American version of Please Please Me called Introducing the Beatles, which is basically the same songs, minus one or two or add one or two. There were so many different versions of these albums coming out. This is an original, not one of the counterfeit albums, because I know this is the, <clears throat> one of the most knocked off albums of all time. This, as far as I can tell, this is an original. This came out, I think, in early June of 64. And it didn't get much play because it was VJ and they didn't really have a lot of clout in the business. But two weeks later, the American Meet the Beatles came out and this caused a worldwide sensation, or this American sensation uh, on Capitol Records. This is a monocopy. Um, Capitol, of course, was a big company. They had a lot of clout and they got the music played on every radio station in the country over and over and over again. And uh, so I know it's not their debut, but it's their American debut. So those two are their American debuts of the Beatles. The same year, 64, a band I was much more into than the Beatles at the time was the Rolling Stones. And this is uh, introducing the Rolling Stones. I mean, England's newest hit makers, the Rolling Stones. Uh, the original band with Brian Jones. Um, again, most of the songs on here are covers. Uh, Not Fade Away, Route 66, Honest I Do, um, Can I Get a Witness, Carol by Chuck Berry, I'm a King Bee. But what a great, great album. Great covers by the Rolling Stones debut album in America. Also that same year, Another fantastic album, which I didn't realize at the time. I didn't get turned on to him until college in 67 or so. But this was his debut album, and it is Otis Redding, Pain in My Heart. This is a repress on uh, Atco, but what a fantastic album. Pain in My Heart, Stand By Me, You Send Me, uh, These Arms of Mine, um, That's What My Heart Needs, Lucille, fantastic album. And really the beginning of... So, so many great, great soul albums by the great Otis Redding, also from 1964. 1965, something a little bit different here. I remember hearing this album for the first time, and I was like blown away. And it is the Paul Butterfield Band, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, with Paul Butterfield, Mike uh, Bloomfield, Elvin Bishop, Jerome Arnold, Sam Lay, and Mark Nafflin on organ. Um, just amazing record. They first start off with Born in Chicago. Just couldn't believe it the first time I heard it. Just crazy. And on the back, the first time I ever saw this, it became a thing after this. But the first time in a little square on the back, it says, we suggest that you play this record at the highest possible volume in order to fully appreciate the sound of the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. And we did play it loud all the time. Uh, Born in Chicago, Shake Your Moneymaker, Blues with a Feeling, Mellow Down Easy, Mystery Train, Look Over Yonder Walls. That summer of 65, uh, when I was my 16th birthday, I went to the Newport Folk Festival. And uh, during the day, we saw Paul Butterfield Blues Band playing there and uh, something else. Also that same year, the California scene started happening. And one of the great debuts of that time was the Birds, Mr. Tambourine Man. Um, not much to say about this. You all know Mr. Tambourine Man, uh, uh, Bells of Rimney, All I Really Want to Do, uh, Chimes of Freedom. There's the band. You all know the band. Uh, and this is a picture on the back of Bob Dylan visiting the Birds at the in-person performance. Mike Clark, David Crosby, Gene Clark, Bob Dylan, Chris Hillman, and James Jim McGuinn. And their first album, The Birds. In the 60s, there was just a plethora of so many new bands coming out. It was just ridiculous. Um, there are a number of bands I haven't shown because I don't have their first album. I don't have The Dead's first album, which I used to have. Um, a number of other bands. But anyway, you can't show everything. Then again, 1966. We had one of the first big interracial bands of the era. And that was Love. Uh... Love was fantastic album. Um, there are, uh, later albums, I think, actually were a little better, but this was a fantastic debut with Arthur Lee. 
Um, they had a hard time getting booked, obviously, in the South in the 60s. Um, but I never got to see them, unfortunately. But love this album. It starts off with my little red book. I can't explain. A message to Pretty. Um, it just, just great, great album. This is a Sunday's uh, repress. Because I got sick of waiting around to find a clean original. So I said, you know what? Sunday's has a brand new copy. I'm getting that one. Love it. Also in 66, this is an album that everybody said, um, out of uh, how many copies they made, only like 1,500 copies sold. But everybody that bought one started a group. And that was The Velvet Underground with Nico, designed by Andy Warhol. This one actually still has the banana on the cover. We all know this album. We don't need to go over it. Uh, but I will. Uh, Lou Reed, John Kale, Sterling Morrison, Maureen Tucker, and Nico doing some vocals. Uh, Sunday Morning, I'm Waiting for My Man, Venus and Furs, Heroin, I'll Be Your Mirror, European Sun. I mean, this was so different than anything else. Nothing sounded like this when this first came out. And that same year, in 66, from across the sea, this guy had been in another group, and he formed a new group when he left the Yardbirds, and the new group was Cream. And this is their fresh album, Fresh Cream, their first debut album. Amazing stuff, too. Great blues. Great blues rock. And... I was lucky enough to see Cream twice. I saw them uh, the first time they ever played in the United States at a Murray the K show. And I saw them later on in college, 67. But there you go. Cream, Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker, Eric Clapton. <clears throat> and then in 67, I've told this story before, but I'll tell it one more time. Um, just graduated high school. It was summertime. I'm home. My phone rings. It's my next door neighbor. Good friend of mine, still a friend of mine, starts yelling, stop whatever you're doing, come over here, just drop whatever you're doing, come, come over right now, right? I mean, you got to hear this, you got to hear this. I said, well, what? doesn't matter, just come, come. So I ran out the door, went, ran across the street, walked to his house, went upstairs, and he put this record on, and both our jaws dropped and hit the floor, and it was the Jimi Hendrix experience, one of the greatest debut albums of any artist, any rock artist, for sure. Um, I went out the next day and bought a copy, took it to college with me, and played it all the time. Until his next album came out, Axis Bold is Love, and I played that all the time. And I got to see Jimmy twice, luckily. I saw him uh, in freshman year of college on tour when he had uh, the Soft Machine opening for him. And then Jimmy, and I saw him at Woodstock. So Jimi Hendrix, probably the great, um, for me, the greatest debut on rock and roll. That same year... We had a band from California, and it was The Doors, their first album. This is obviously not an original. This is a uh, audiophile um, acoustic sounds, 2LP, 45 RPM pressing. Fantastic album. Great, great stuff. Um, well, you say, you know, everyone knows The Doors' first album. But like I'm saying, there's so many great debuts in the 60s. It's uh, hard to imagine today. Also, there's a blues band. And I was always a big blues fan. So I love this album. It's Canned Heat with uh, Al Wilson and Bob Height. And um, this was their first album, just called Canned Heat, on um, Liberty Records. And on here you have Rollin' and Tumblin', Bullfrog Blues, uh, Catfish Blues, Dust My Broom, um, Rich Woman. Just fantastic. Canned Heat. Only got to see them once at Woodstock, but uh, pff, love Can't Heat. And from across the seas, another band, another blues rock band, which I absolutely loved. And of course, it's 10 years after. Alvin Lee, got to see them twice. Uh, second time was uh, after Woodstock. I saw them at a high school gym in uh, outside in Washington, D.C., right outside D.C. No seats, just a big floor. The band was maybe... Three, four feet off the floor with a small stage. Pfft, what a show, man. Unbelievable. Ten years after. By 68, things were getting a little bit strange now. And one of the stranger albums of 1968 and if not of the 60s 
was the debut album by Dr. John. This is called The Night Tripper Grease Grease. If you've never heard this record, there's never been anything like it. On the Echo label, um, mixing psychedelia and New Orleans funk. Um, just something else. Dr. John, Grease Grease, Gumbo Yaya, Mama Roo. I Walk on Gilded Splinters. What a great, great album. There's the doctor. The late, great Dr. John. So a little more upbeat, a little more spirited. How about Spirit? Their first album from 68. Uh, with uh, Mark Andes, uh, Cassidy, Randy California, etc. <laughs> a story I heard about Randy California. He grew up in New York. And he was at a club in New York, and there was a band playing, and it was called Jimmy James and the Blue Flames, and he became friends with the guitarist, Jimmy James, which is Jimi Hendrix, and Jimi Hendrix said, I'm going to England, form a band, why don't you come with me? And Randy California was 16 years old at the time, and he went to his mother and said, Mom, I'm going to England to join a rock band. And his mother said, like hell you are, you're staying here and finishing high school. So he never went. And supposedly Jimi Hendrix gave him the name. Um, if he was from California originally, but he was living in New York. And uh, Jimmy said, where are you from? He's California. So he became Randy California. Unfortunately, Randy California died young. He was uh, actually saved his son who was uh, swimming. And his son started to drown. He swam out, uh, managed to save his son, but he died in the uh, by drowning in that time. Very sad, but... Great album, put out many great album spirits. Another one from 68, which I absolutely loved, and uh, just saw a documentary on him on Netflix, and that's uh, Leonard Cohn, the songs of Leonard Cohn. And uh, this album, I gotta look at the songs on the inside because they don't have it on the outside, but he does um, So Long Marianne, um, one of us can't, cannot be wrong. Uh, Stories of the Street. Oh, excuse me. Suzanne. Sisters of Mercy. Winter Lady. Leonard Cohen, one of the great singer, songwriter, poets of the 60s for sure. He was a lot older than everybody else. I mean, by the time this record came out, he was already 30 years old in 68. And we were already, you know, we were 19, 15, 16 years old. And he was already 30 years old. He was an old man. But uh, amazing. Leonard Cohen. And for many years, and still is one of my favorite bands of all time. This album came out in 68 also. And again, it changed the music again. Because people hadn't heard things like this before. And that was music from Big Pink by the band. Um, I remember reading a thing that Eric Clapton, who was in Cream, and said, the first time he heard this album, he said, all of a sudden, I felt like a dinosaur. He said, all his music seemed old and slow. It just didn't seem, just seemed out of date. This seemed so new and fresh at the time. That was merely two years after Cream's first album came out. And in 1969, we have the great... Santana, what an album. I saw them about three weeks before Woodstock. There was a festival in Atlantic City called Atlantic City Pop Festival where I saw Dr. John. And Santana comes out and no one had heard of them in the East Coast. They had played at the Fillmore in the West Coast, but in the East Coast, no one had heard of them. And um, they were introduced as the Santana Blues Band. And uh, Carlos came out and said, Santana's our name, we're not a blues band. And they continued, they, no one had heard of them. They blew the place away. And then I saw them later on in Woodstock. It was amazing. And this is the uh, first album with the flip side, the flip back. One, two, Santana. Another great, great uh, debut album. Another great debut by a guy who's still rocking all these years later. Neil Young, first album came out in 69, just called Neil Young. Another amazing record. The Loner, I've Been Waiting For You, The Laughing Lady, uh, I've Lived Just So Long, The Last Trip To Tulsa, etc. Great, great stuff. 
Neil Young. And last but not least, uh, 1969, I remember buying this record, bringing it home. My father was like, what the hell is that? That's <laughs> Johnny Winter. Fantastic, man. What a guitar player. What a singer-songwriter. It was just fantastic. This album has, besides him on it, it has uh, Willie Dixon plays uh, bass. Uh, Walter Shecky Horton is playing the uh, harmonica. Edgar Winter's on piano. What a great, great album. His debut album, Johnny Winter, Mean Mistreater, Good Morning Little Schoolgirl, Backdoor Friend. I know I left some stuff out. Particularly, I'm thinking uh, the first Crosby, Stills, and Nash album I should have brought out from 1969. So again, these aren't the best album, best debuts of, 60, of the 60s. They're my favorite of the 60s. I never say the best because the best sort of gives you, uh, people think, you have some uh, knowledge that no one else has, and you, you sort of know more than anybody else. I don't know more than anybody else. I just know what I like. <clears throat> Those are my favorite debut albums from the 1960s. Um, I think I may do the 70s next week, which should be interesting also. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. Uh, I want to thank all my new subscribers. I've gotten a bunch of them recently, so I appreciate that. And... Um, Leave your comments. I always answer all my comments. Um, and until next time, peace.